Thank you very much for joining me for a review of something a little bit different and obliquely related to the Horus Heresy. In my update video for this week, I mentioned that um, I'd ordered some 32, well, 28, 32 millimeter uh, science fiction miniatures from another manufacturer of resin models um, to do a bit of a comparison in terms of what the quality is like compared to Forge World. So obviously I've been, I've spent a number of my videos talking about Forge World casting quality. Um, that's the first reason I bought these guys. The second is um, I wanted some troops I could use uh, in a militia force. Um, and these are quite sci-fi, quite advanced sci-fi troops. Uh, and I wanted something that looked completely different to anything GW made uh, to use under the um, provenance of uh, survivors of the dark age of technology. So yes, here they are. And the company we're buying from and having a look at here is Anvil Industry. So Anvil is a, um, they've got a, a fairly decent sized range of sci-fi resin models. Um, they also pr produce a game and they also make a lot of accessories as well. So, uh, and, and some of the accessories they make, I think it's fair to say they, they fill the gap in the market uh, that uh, Forge World and Games Workshop don't address. Uh, and they also did things like, so for example, when Games were, when Forge World changed the hand design of all of their um, Armour Through the Ages miniatures uh, and left everyone with a load of weapons that they couldn't use, uh, Anvil created a set of, a, tap, a cheap set of hands so you could use those uh, on those, to use those old weapons that you had, which is, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to do. But yeah, so I've ordered 20 miniatures here. Let's have a look at them. So I have to get past all this sellotape first. So there's two different types of model I've ordered. One's a sort of a, an armoured an armored futuristic warrior equivalent. And then the other is kind of like um, a like a, a Hume, more like a Hume, a Guardsman or a Solar Auxilist type trooper. So what we've got, oh wow, well, we've got, that'll be my order form. And then we've got a lot of packing peanuts. So I think we're gonna play Lucky Dip here. Let's see what I can find. So there's one bag of parts, uh, some bases, some more parts. I love packing peanuts, they're great fun. Some more parts. More parts. Uh, oh, and another bag. Hopefully I won't miss anything here. And another bag. There you go, that should do. I hope that didn't sound too noisy on the audio pickup. Right, let's put all those packing peanuts away and have a look at what we've got. So, the the figures I've bought there's two there's two squads. The first is called a Black Ops Fire Team, and these are kind of like heavily armored futuristic infantry. So you might call them Space Marines or Space Marine equivalents. Uh, and then the second thing is our Martian Orbital Fusiliers, which are humans in armored spacesuits with uh, um, energy rifles. You know, and perhaps could be seen as an analog to Solar Auxilia. Or, or even the, the Velataris models. So let's, well, let's have a look. So this here, so this is the Black Ops fire team. So let's get these guys out and have a look at them. Uh, this is the first time I've uh, had anything to do with Anvil Industries. Um, I've not bought any, it's the first time I've bought any of their models. Um, I've got fr some friends who have bought them before and have uh, said good things about them. All right, so look. So, yeah, that was pretty good. A little bit of flash. Small amount of a mold line to take off there. It's not too bad. They're quite tactical as well, so they've got lots of equipment pouches there. They're more, they're something, they're more styled along how you might imagine real world military to be in space as opposed to the slightly more 
uh, stylized view that Games Workshop and Forge will take. You've got the webbing going around this back as well. Yeah, that's nice. Huh? Got this cabling design on the back of the model. Yeah, it looks good, that. A little, little bit of cleanup, but yeah, pretty good. Let's have a look at a few more. I mean, one thing that, and this is interesting. So he's got, he's got his rifle slung. Possibly a bolt then, possibly not. But yeah, these, um, they're less poseable than the marine kits that Forge will do. So you can see straight away the torsos are attached and I think most of them actually got their arms on. So they're going to be more monopose than, than the flexibility we get with GW uh, Forge or kits. But the detail is certainly sharp and crisp. The resins is a darker color than Forge World users. Not quite as, um, doesn't look quite perhaps as opaque as Forge Old Resin. Well, Forge Old Resin has a really nice solid look to it. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, yeah, it's nice how um, you got you got pistols and equipment already attached. Yeah, that looks, that looks really good. Let's continue to go through these a bit quicker and see. A little bit of flash again to remove there. But to be honest, looking at these, this, I'm wondering if this might be a sergeant guy. Got a few of them got a bit of battle damage on. Yeah, I guess if you're wearing all this heavy armor, you're going to be uh, taking some fire. So uh, I guess you're going to take some damage. Again, a bit of flash, but no. Very, very little in the way of mold lines or molds, uh, and, and certainly no mold slips yet. So, this is looking good so far. I'll need a bit of clean up there. This guy's actually got a stock built onto him. It's quite intriguing. Crouching guy. Do like how they come with all the grenades attached. I mean, I guess because um, they're they're monopose, is you can get away with putting equipment on. You see, with Forge World's approach of having multipose marines, if you put equipment on, then you you do restrict the movement a bit. Although saying that, if you look at say the Medusa and Immortal set, uh, they do come with um, pistols and and grenades on. So yeah, perhaps I'm wrong there. Perhaps I could do that. And these, these are just the look I was wanting for something that could be in powered armor, but isn't a space marine. So, and that's the whole point, you know, because in Survivors of the Dark Age of Technology, you can actually get um, grenade, they're called grenadier units, and you can get their saving throw, their base saving throw at three plus. Very nice. I'm, uh, yeah, no, I'm genuinely impressed with that. Uh, so here, Got a packet of weapons, so these are very tactical. These um, these look very much like some modern military ri assault rifles. Particularly, they particularly put me in in mind of the I think it's called the Scar rifle, I believe. It has uh, lots of uh, um, attachment rails or pickney rails. Clearly influenced by a bolt gun as well. A pistol here with a, a suppressor on it, a box mag. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's supposed to be a bit like a Uzi type thing. And what's this guy here? Oh, he's got a, a dual taped up mag. And what's this? Oh, right, so. so and this is an interesting approach. So this is like an accessory, a grenade or an explosive charge. So to get more out of molding these, they've actually done weapon plus an accessory. That's quite a quite a neat little concept. Uh, have a look at a few more of these. Quite enjoying this. Uh, that's uh, they got one of the rifles with a suppressor on it. 
I guess you could use these as a uh, these would make good space marine sniper rifles for seeker uh, recon squads, not seeker squads. And then this one has got a a scope on it and like a targeting laser, perhaps laser dot sight on the side. And then what about the, oh, there's another thing here? There's a lot of variety here. This guy has got a scope and a what looks like a bipod. If you've uh, ever heard of the Reasonable Marines, these guys look like they um, they came straight from the Reasonable Marines chapter. And then this one here, once the focus decides to join the party, um, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, has got a grenade launcher, an underslung grenade launcher. I think that might go with the, one of those other miniatures had some like grenades or something on his belt. There you go, this guy. I wonder if those two go together. Yeah, you got hand and no hand. So yeah, I think that might go there. And then, oh, oh there's a special weapon here as well. Um, mm, yeah. Fusion rifle, everybody. Anybody? You, yeah, obviously it's not. It, that's clearly not a melter gun. Good, but again, um, on those, I mean, those are even better turned out than the uh, torsos. No evidence at all of any cleanup that's going to be needed there. So, well, in terms of mold line removal, it'll just be taking them off the sprues and taking the flash away. Now. These are the backpacks for these guys. These, um, so yeah, what I say, this is a Black Ops fighting, I and mean, this is from a, a range I have called the Exo Lords or Exo Armored Lords or something. Yeah, pretty good. Nice, well, look pretty good. Very nice to cast again. Uh, what else do we have? These guys have got any more gear, and there's some heads here as well. And then we can move on to the uh, orbital fusiliers. So yeah, so I bought these to 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 make up some survivors of a dark age of technology for my militia for a militia attachment. And there's a bit of something different as well. Yeah, these are certainly inspired by the Astartes. There's a few little accessories. So the pistol here. Less uh, consistency with the resin used. I'm not sure why these are in a different colour to the others. I mean, maybe it's just his supply, you know, he's working on a smaller scale probably, and his supply is a bit less consistent. Let's look another couple of heads. All right, I'll drop it. There you go. So he's got, like I said, night vision goggles. Or, or perhaps a bit more than night vision goggles, you would have thought anything like that would already be integrated into, into the helmet. And then targeting optic on the side. And then they have these sort of respirators as well, like respirator bottles, a bit like a, a modern day respirator or gas mask from modern military. And then he's a, t I don't know if we're able to get the focus on this, but you get these, um, I don't know if that's gonna work. Sorry about that. Oh, is it gonna? I'm really struggling to get the focus. It's such a small part. There you go, finally. This looks like there's a whole set of these, and I wonder if these are um, little, I suppose to be like little vision optics that are gonna go on. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to figure that out as I work through it. Yeah, good. Right, let's look at the um, orbital fusiliers. So these are kind of, as I say, these are, you might imagine these to be almost like solar auxiliary equivalent. So we've got some torsos here. And so they've got separate heads, separate legs and separate arms. And this come from, these come from what's called a regiment's range. And I think, I mean, I bought these as a single kit, but I think you can customize and put all sorts of different legs onto bodies and arms and heads. We've got a life support unit on the back there. Pretty good. Well, they look pretty good. They're cast extremely well. 
And I mean, casting quality wise, I mean, there's apart from removing those little bits of flash you can see, there's no evidence whatsoever of any mold slippage. So uh, I'm I'm impressed. Let's have a look at the heads. So what do you get? So you get like a an undergarment head, a cooling garment head, a visor raised head, and then a variety of visored helmets. So with some targeting optics on the side. Um, and then, then you get the same again. So you get 12 heads for uh, 10 troopers. So you get a few spares, right? Got some uh, bodies here. Bodies and arms, should I say. Let's get the legs. I'm not sure what the scale's gonna be like on these. Um, I wonder if they're closer to true 28 than heroic. They look like they might be, yeah, after, I don't know if these are like 32 heroic or 28 heroic. Anyway, so yeah, we've got armored space at legs. Yeah, decent detail. And again, excellent casting quality. I don't think the depth of detail on these is perhaps uh, as good as the solar, it's not as good as the solar auxilia. Um, but they good, yeah, they still look good nonetheless. Don't get me wrong. But no, they haven't got quite, they haven't quite got the three dimensional depth. Um, what's this? There is a, Oh, so this is an equipment pouch. I think this might be to go with the uh, Black Ops guy. So look at all that, gosh. Grenades, knives, pouches, stacks of ammo clips, belts, screwdriver, just in case your armor comes loose. Mm, very good. See, now, with, with Forge World, you'll be paying an extra tenner to get these sort, to get like a pack of pistols and equipment pouches. Whereas here it's included. The cost of these, just for reference, so this is in okay, UK pounds, so pound sterling. The Black Ops fire team was, th was 35 pounds and the Orbital Fusiliers was 28 pounds. Well, I should actually say the Black Ops team was 36 pounds because the bases were separate on those. So yeah, including 10 bases, 36 pounds for the Black Ops and 28 pounds for the Orbital Fusiliers. And then these are the arms on the Orbital Fusiliers. So there's gonna be a bit more work around the Orbital Fusiliers to put those guys together. Hopefully um, these, looks like they've got peg and receiver joints, so they shouldn't be too hard to put together, as long as everything lines up. And interesting how they mould the stock onto quite a lot of these arms as well for the rifles. And talking of rifles, let's have a look at, finally, let's have a quick look at the weapons on these guys. This is all quite interesting. I've never, I'm, this is the first time I've looked at these guys, quite interesting. So here we go, they have these. So they come with these rifles and these, what are they called, there you go. Tesla, Oop. oh, that was a grenade, whoops. Put that back in the bag, otherwise I'll lose it. Um, are they called Tesla rifles or something? They're kind of like an energy rifle, aren't they? You could use it as a las gun or a variety, uh, yeah, you could you could use it, to be honest, as anything, even as a militia rifle, should you wish. Or something a bit more esoteric. You know, you can, with the dark, survivors of the dark age of technology, you can give them uh, special, special weapon options. Um, you know, to increase, I think it increases their weapon strength, if I recall correctly. Well, there you go. I think that's uh, that's everything there. So, um, and then yeah, some bases. Um, yeah. So interesting. That was um, interesting to look at those guys. Um, I'll have to get those built at some point. <laughs> Give myself another little building project here. Um, but yeah, those are. I'm. I'm. At, okay, this is the first time I've bought from them. But yeah, no, I'm generally genuinely impressed by the production quality on those are very nicely done and uh, as a result they should be actually quite a bit quicker to assemble than your average um, than I'm used to with forge world where, where I tend to find quite a lot of cleanups required. Anyway let me know what you think. Um, I thought I'd share that with you as a 
you know, a look at sci-fi resin models from a different manufacturer's point of view. Um, yeah, okay. Anyway, hope you enjoy this. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.